going to be and, and do what is in line with the will of God, that's when things start to happen. Uh, it wasn't just uh, Sister Blessing talking out of passion. She was prophesying a moment ago when she began to speak of the effect and the power of the Holy Ghost that is happening in this city and in this region. I want to stand before you and prophetically declare that it is by design. Every hiccup, every setback has only been a setup for the work of God in this city. I want you to know that this church is going to explode, that its impact is going to multiply, and that the word of God will come to pass, not in short order, not in partiality, but in totality and in completion. By the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody lift up your hands and say, I thank the Lord right now. Praise God. Praise God. Well, um, I wanted to preach something I had all structured out. But that's not what I felt. I want to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't know what your custom is here, but if you wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to stand for the reading of the word. 1 Kings chapter 18, we'll read a, first, a few verses starting with verse 41. I read from the King James Version, uh, so that's what I'm going to read because that's what's in my notes, but uh, whatever you all use, that. okay, so we got King James up there, praise God, okay, and Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain somebody say there is a sound say it a little bit stronger than that there is a sound of abundance of rain so Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his, put his face between his knees uh, more than a few leaders have felt like that and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. Somebody say a little cloud. <laughs> Like a man's hand, and he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. Somebody say, Black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. Somebody say, Great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. I'd like to talk to you just for a few minutes today from the thought, what to do with a word. What to do with a word. Why don't you lay down your cell phone or your iPad, your, your Bible, and lift up your hands and just ask the Lord to speak to your heart. Hallelujah, God. Interlace your word in with mine, God. Help me to speak exactly what you would want me to say. Let the Holy Ghost, Lord, give way more in this text than what I could in my own limited English language. We ask, Lord, that your presence would be here today, that your power would be upon us, that your name would be with us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And somebody shout in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. This text is, is so interesting to me because I feel like it is exactly where we are. And specifically, I believe it is where the Pentecostals of Sydney are. You can hear a lot of messages and uh, over time, there's a number of you that have been here a long time and when you've been in church a while, you can sometimes become a little numb to what the Holy Ghost is trying to say. 
Now, I don't want to ask anybody to say amen because I, I don't want anybody to talk about you after church. So if that applies to you, you can just keep your mouth shut, not make any particular eye contact, and keep your reputation safe. But there's are times when you've heard a word from the Lord more than a few times and the frequency, the familiarity to that word begins to put a callus on your heart. Well, I, I've heard that we're going to have revival before. I, I've heard that I'm going to get this healing before. I've, I've heard that God is going to do this, that, and the other thing before. But I want you to know when the moment comes, it doesn't matter where you are or what you think about it or what you felt about it or what happened the last time it seemed like it was this close. When it comes time for God to do what he's going to do, I want you to know that it is going to happen. I know that you might be deliberating within yourself. I know you might be struggling with thoughts of doubt. I know that you may have to push through some of the things that other people have told you, some of the things that other people have said to you. But when God gets ready to do something, I want you to know that it is going to happen. Can somebody say amen? amen. It doesn't matter what you feel like. I want you to know your feelings are secondary. They are not evidence according to the Holy Ghost. Your feelings don't weigh anything in the balance of the word of God. When God begins to declare something, you may say, I don't feel like that's right, but the Holy Ghost doesn't agree with that. It's only up to what the Holy Ghost says, and when the Holy Ghost says it, that's what's going to happen. That's how it's going to take place. That's when it's going to take place. Can somebody shout amen? amen? And so we're dealing with things in life and we're going through the seasons of God's touch and his ministry in our life. And we've come to a season where God's word is being spoken. And so I know that some people may be struggling with where God is taking you through before and the seasons he's taking you through before and the valley of the shadow of death that has seemed to close in before. But I want you to know that as Rod and his staff are still with you and you are still going to make it to the other side and you've walked into a moment of destiny for you and your family that is going to be life changing. Somebody lift up your hand and shout yes. And when I was thinking of what God wanted to say in this service and when I was meditating on where God wanted to speak to this church God brought me back to this passage I've only preached this passage one other time and I it's been preached many times but it's only the second time that I've preached it and here in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 41 the Bible says that Elijah said to Ahab Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. Now, we've all heard this verse misquoted many times. We all have heard it, those that have heard this verse, quoted as such. I, for I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Because that makes logical sense. We all work within our senses. How many like money? Okay, I really like money when you put it as cash in my hand. Okay, you know, money is good when it's deposited into my account and I see that I went up a few dollars. That's always nice. But I really like when you give me a stack of bills in my hand. I can feel it. I can touch it. It comes and it goes out of my fingertips. I like cash money. As we used to say in high school when I pretended I was a gangster when my dad wasn't looking. I like cash money. Okay? You can, you can do what you want with your digital. Praise God. But I like cash money. $20 via cash app ain't the same as $20 in my hand. $20 in my bank account ain't the same as $20 in my fingertips. I like cash money. When my wife tells me I love you, 
I like her to be about 0.6 of an inch away from my ear when she says it. I like it a whole lot better than just reading it via text. I like to hear her say, I love you. The text is fine. I feel a little something when she does it, but when she gets it right up to my ear and she says, I love you. It feels a little different. The connection's a little deeper. It means something a little bit more. I love when they talk to me about how good the seafood is here in Sydney and how living in the Midwest, every bit of seafood, it doesn't matter how fresh Mitchell's seafood says it is, it's still probably a day's worth of travel from either Boston or Washington. But in Sydney, it came in on that morning and they just put it on the grill probably an hour ago and you're getting it real fresh and we sat down and we ate that really good seafood I believe that was Friday that we did that and that taste no matter how good it sounded when I tasted it it was actually in my mouth mmm that was good that soft shell crab tasted real good that shrimp tasted very good but it was different from just hearing the story about it from where I tasted it. We like to make determinations on things based on our five senses. We like to feel it. We like to taste it. We like to look at it. We like to make sure that it's tangible and it's real. But I want you to know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And when the word goes forth, you've got to find that within you to have faith. Faith that what God is speaking is true. Hold on just a moment. I know I'm building a long runway here, but we're going to take off here in a moment. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up and eat and drink, for there is a sound of rain. Let me tell you what I felt here for the Pentecostals of Sydney. I felt the Holy Ghost say that there is a word coming from your pastor, that it may not be tangible. It may not be something that you can hear. It may not be something that you've seen just yet. But when the word goes forth, I want you to know that it is a word from God. I want you to know that you can build your house on it. I want you to know you can build your family on it. There is an abundance of a sound of rain. I don't have to hear it. I don't have to see it. But there is a sound of an abundance of rain in this house. I'm telling you, the devil has told you what he said before. It came and it went and nothing happened. I want you to know that the devil has tried to destroy your faith because you've made decisions financially based on the word of God and it didn't happen quite as you expected. But I want you to know that you're still here despite whatever you thought would have happened. And I want you to know that this time, this is a moment in the timetable of God right here that when this word goes forth, it is is going to come back pressed down shaken together and running over because there is an abundance of a sound of rain so Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his faith between his knees. I want you to know that there are times where Sister Gina or another leader of this church will come up and give a word and there's no evidence of it. You can't hear anything about it. You can't see the evidence of it. And they speak what thus saith the Lord and that carnal flesh gets a hold of them afterwards and they want to go and throw themselves upon the earth and put their head between their knees ask King God, did I really say that right? Is that exactly how you felt it? I wonder if there's a scene of God that would stand up right now and say, when it comes across the pulpit, I don't care what it sounds like, what it looks like, but I'm going to believe it as a word of God. I'm going to stand behind it. I'm going to get with it. I'm going to lift my voice to it because there is a sound of an abundance of rain. The clouds may not be in the sky yet. The evidence may not be in the field yet, but I hear the sound ah, somebody needs to get a little aggressive in the Holy Ghost today somebody needs to start saying my kids are coming back to the Holy Ghost 
My kids are coming back to church. I know they were in the club last night. I know they don't want to have anything to do with me last year, but they're coming back to God. Somebody needs to get real aggressive. I know that the Lord is going to allow me to bless the church this year. So I see my salary doubling. I don't have the career yet. I don't have the degree yet. I don't have the pedigree yet, but there is a sound. I'm not content enough just deliberating based on my senses. I'm not content. I'm not content. I'm not content just because it hasn't shown itself yet. Just because I can't feel it with my fingers yet. When God said it, I will believe it, and that's good enough for me. I know the devil wants to tear down every bit of faith I have. I know the devil wants me to look at this world and get distracted by every offensive voice, by every distracting voice. But I'm going to stand here flat-footed in the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to stand against the tide. And I'm going to declare in the Holy Ghost that there is a sound of an abundance of rain. There is victory in my family. I am going to have peace. I am going to have joy. So you think that the man of God gets up here and declares something that sounds crazy. And he just goes home and sleeps like a baby. <laughs> it ain't like that all the time. They get up. That man or woman of God declares what thus saith the Lord. And the Bible said that Elijah cast himself down upon the earth. And put his face between his knees. There was something inside of him. He called his servant and he said, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and he said, there is nothing. So you spoke unto the Holy Ghost. You did feel the urgency. You felt the responsibility of what you felt to say. You understood the words coming out of your mouth. You were following what the Lord was saying. To the point even that you were afraid that you might have misspoken. And you took it to a private prayer meeting. And you told your assistant, hey, go look toward the sea. That servant goes and comes back and says, Pastor, hey, there's nothing. In, in modern day church, it's not just a servant. You've got about 10 or 15 saints that think they know everything. Texan pastor, hey pastor. I don't know, I don't know if that was right. I, 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 don't, I don't see that happening. You, you know they've got legislation trying to box us in. You, you, you know that they, they, they've got things that are trying to work against us. You, you know there's somebody down the road that's trying to look for any reason to call us out and put us on TV news tonight. I, I don't know that we can do that. I don't know that we can say that in, in the kind of world that we're living in. So there's no evidence. There's no cloud over the sea. There's, there's no evidence. There was nothing. And he said, go again. And the Bible says seven times. Now, in reading that, we don't really identify emotionally with what's happening there because the Bible summarizes the activity. But let me just add, and I do believe it's accurate, but let me just add a Mark Crowder version to that. And so, Mark Crowder's version starts, and he says, and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up, and he looked, and he said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. 
And he went up to look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and came back and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. And he went up and looked toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. And he went up and looked toward the sea and went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. And he went up and looked toward the sea and he went up and looked and he said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. And he went up and looked toward the sea and went up. Some of you are already tired. Some of you are already given up. Some of you are already hoping I skip to number seven. But I want you to know sometimes you've got to go through the valley of the shadow as the way that it's supposed to go. You've got to take it slow. You've got to go step by step. You've got to go Monday. You've got to go Tuesday. You've got you to go every single day. God's giving you a word and you're already frustrated because it hasn't come to pass hasn't come to pass yet. But I'm looking at a saint of God that's getting determined in their spirit this morning to say, I don't care what it looks like, I don't care what it feels like, I'm gonna go every day. I'm gonna go every time. I'm gonna keep clapping my hands. I know it feels like it's year five. I know it feels like it's year 20, but I'm gonna keep. I'm going to go again. Somebody say, go again. And he said, go again. Seven times. Go again. Go again. But I've, I've asked my children to come to church. Go again. I know, Lord, that you keep telling me that that's my job, but... I've already applied a couple of times. Go again. I know that you say, I feel it in my spirit. I'm supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be doing that. Pastor said to go. But I, I just can't seem to find it in myself. Go again. It doesn't seem like it's working. Go again. I've tried to teach them a Bible study. They don't seem to be open. Go again. I've spoken it over and over and over, but it doesn't seem to be coming to pass. Go again. And the Bible said that on the seventh time. On the seventh time. Woo! Woo! There was a little cloud. There was a little cloud. So we spoke the word. There was nothing. There was no evidence. He was convicted because he had said something that seemed so completely outlandish. Do y'all say outlandish out here in Australia? Okay. It seemed totally outlandish. It seemed completely unconscionable. Do you guys say unconscionable? Okay, just checking. Make sure you're listening. It seemed unconscionable for him to say that. And then he sent his servant seven times. Go again. 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 And when he came back the seventh time, it was a little cloud. Somebody's going to get it here today. Somebody's going to understand it. I know you've been fighting for a long time. I know you've been waiting for the word of God to come to pass. I know it's been line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. I know it's been step by step, precept by precept, and you've been waiting for God to do something big, to do something powerful. But I'm telling you today, you've walked into your season. You've walked into your moment of destiny. It may have not come the first or the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth time, but it's the seventh time. And there's a little cloud. Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. Could you imagine a cloud like this over Sydney? And they're talking about, we're about to have a torrential downpour. My hand looks really small on the big screen. See? The size of a man's hand. 
Now, I don't know if that's figurative or literal, but I don't think it really matters. I think you understand the point. It's the size of a man's hand. And he said, go up. Whoo. This is where I feel somebody's at today. Go up. You've gone seven times. There was nothing. And now you see a little cloud. And somebody's wondering if you ought to wait to see a little bit more evidence or if it's time to get up. I came today to tell somebody it's time to get up. It is time to get up. It's time to find something in your spirit to pull yourself out of the place where you've been living. It's time to get up. It's time to get your mind flat like a flint before the Holy Ghost. And say, Pastor said it before, but I say it again and I feel something in my spirit right now. Uh, getting ready to move in this house. Uh, getting ready to shift in this city. Getting ready to shift in my life. Uh, there's something getting ready to move uh, in this place. It's time to get up. And he said to him, get up and say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. I'm telling you, you're walking into a moment that if you don't get up and get going and start getting in line with what the Holy Ghost is doing, you're going to miss it. But that I believe God has sent me here today to let somebody know, I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to be swallowed up by the rain. I don't want you to be overtaken by the tremendous will of God that's about to occur. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to get in line. Somebody ought to jump up on your feet and say, I'm going to go this morning. <laughs> Prepare the chariot. Get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. It came to pass. It did happen. It did occur. But it took a little while to get there. It took some trial and tribulation. It took some discomfort. It took a little bit of faith. How many remember that song? Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. How many know that song? You heard it before? Okay, okay. Maybe that's a U.S. thing. I finally hit the U.S. thing that y'all don't know. I'll sing it for you one more time just so you got it. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. The Bible says just faith the size of a mustard seed. How many know that's the smallest seed, but it doesn't cross-pollinate. It won't mix with doubt. It won't mix with fear. It refuses to be deterred. That little seed of mustard seed of faith is determined that when I go into the ground, I'm going to see an springing up of faith. I'm going to see what God has said is going to happen. And so today, today, is the day of salvation. I believe that there's such an explosion brewing in this place that is about to take over this city, that is about to transform lives. You're already doing it. It's already happening. We're just here confirming what God is doing. We're confirming that it's going to take exponential growth. We're here confirming and aligning with all, what's already been spoken that God is taking us to the next level. God is pushing us into the next plateau. God is deter uh, determining within us that we're going to the next level. 
Now it's only up to you to determine if you're going to do that. God's already made that determination if you want to get in the boat, if you want to get in alignment. But you have to make that decision now. Every head bowed, every eye closed in the house. Every head bowed, every eye closed in the house. I wonder if the Lord came back today, if Jesus came back, will you be ready? Are you ready to meet him in the air if you were to hear that trump sound and for him to call your soul to heaven? Would you be ready? The Bible says that when we receive Jesus into our hearts according to the book of Acts in chapter 2 and verse 38 that we will speak with other tongues we will speak in a language that's not of this earth it won't be English it won't be Chinese it won't be Spanish but it's going to be a language of heaven it's going to be a heavenly language he's going to give us to us instantly it's like a cup that's overflowing when you're pouring in water once that water reaches the top, it begins to overflow out of the top of that cup. That Pentecostal experience is called speaking in other tongues. I wonder today, you're sitting here in this audience, head down, eyes closed. You've never had that experience. I want you to know it's okay because Jesus hasn't come back yet. But if you haven't had that experience and you just want to be open and honest before the Lord, why don't you just slip up a hand and say, I've never spoken in tongues before. I've never had that experience. That's all right. Hands are going up. That's all right. Ha keep your head down. Keep your eyes closed. That's it. More hands. Praise God. Thank you for being honest before Jesus. That's good. That's good. Put up your hands. That's good. You've never spoken in tongues before. That's it. I see more hands. That's it. That's it. Good. More hands. More hands. Oh, beautiful. More hands. Praise God. More hands. More hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. More hands. That's good. More hands. Praise God. More hands. Praise God. You've never spoken in tongues before. You've never spoken in that beautiful heavenly language from Jesus Christ. I want you to know it's okay to be honest before him because he hasn't come back yet today. He hasn't come back yet. You have, you have more time. You have more time, and God wants today, this service, right now, to be your time. Whoo, praise God. You can put your hands down. Let me ask you right now, if there are things, if there's pain in your life, pain in your heart, pain in your body, you've been suffering through chronic pain, maybe you have a disease from the doctor, maybe you've been suffering with the spirit, of suicide or the spirit of anxiety and you don't know how to get from day to day from moment to moment I want you to know that the God of healing is here today but you would just like to open up your heart to him and declare while everybody's eyes are closed and heads are down and bowed you just want to say God I've been suffering through this pain and I want you to heal it today why don't you just lift up your hand why don't you raise your hand and say I, I I want you, God, I want you to heal this pain. It's been in my heart. I've been suffering through bitterness. I've been suffering with thoughts of suicide, with, through depression, through anxiety. I want you to heal this in me today. I've been suffering with pain in my arms and in my legs and my neck. I've been having this stabbing pain in my side. I want you to touch that, Lord, right now. Oh, hands are going up all over the building. Hands, more hands, more hands. Beautiful, more hands, more hands. Oh, praise God. Ooh, there's a God that loves you. He's going to touch you today, my friend. He's going to touch you today. Beautiful. You can put your hand down. You can put your hand down. There's somebody here today. It's not so much about the Holy Ghost. It's not so much about pain or struggling, but something's just not right in your life. Something feels broken. Something feels out of whack in my American vernacular. Something feels like it needs an adjustment. And you're not sure what it is. You're not sure. 
how it's going and you're not even sure that if Jesus came back right now, if you would make it, maybe you have spoken in tongues before. Maybe you have been baptized in Jesus' name. But something feels wrong. I want you to know you've come to the right place at the right time. Why don't you be authentic before the Lord right now and just lift up your hand and just wave it to him and say, God, I need something. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it feels like. But something's not right. And I need you to do something right now for me, for my family, for my children. Praise God, you can put your hands down. If you would, just open up your eyes and lift up your head and look at me for a moment. Whew. I want you to know that when we did that, about 60 to 70% of the people in this room lifted up their hands for one of those things that we talked about. I want you to know that God is so happy that you would be willing to open up your heart. He's a gentleman. He's not a burglar. He's not an abuser. I know you've been, some of you, through sexual abuse, but that's not how Jesus works. Some of you have been verbally abused, but, but that's not how Jesus works. He's a gentleman. He's going to come with open hands, and he's going to inquire of you to put your hands into the holes where the nails are put, and he's going to ask you to look into his eyes and to tell and to put your hands into his side. He's not going to be an abuser. He's not going to push himself on you. You're going to have to come to him, as the Bible says, as a child. And be receptive of his love. To receive his love. Can the saint of God in here say amen? So in a moment, we're going to come to the front as a, child, uh, as a family. We're going to come to the front. And God's going to do something amazing. A second ago, I asked for those that haven't had an experience with the Holy Ghost. In a moment, we're going to come as a, as a family. And if you raised your hand to say that you had never had the gift of the Holy Ghost, you've never spoken in a heavenly language, you've never spoken uh, with tongues before, I'm going to have you come up and line over on this side of the platform. In a moment, not right now, but in a moment, when we asked the question earlier that if you were struggling with pain in your body or pain in your mind and your heart, you've been struggling with thoughts of suicide, you've been living with chronic pain, you're living with a diagnosis, I'm going to ask you to come up to the front and just line up here in the center, not right now, but in a moment. And I asked a question later that for those that you know something's wrong, God needs to adjust something in your life, I want you to come up and line yourself over, over on this side of the platform. Not right now, but just in a moment. And what's going to happen is we're going to come to the front, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to repent. I can't tell you how many people just feel a relief giving all of their issues and all of their problems and all of their struggles to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's a good, good father. He's a loving father. The Bible says that he's closer than the very mention of his name. So if you, in the process of repenting, you begin to call the name of Jesus, it's like his loving arms come around you and just wrap you up so tight. And you're going to feel that in this altar. Can somebody say amen? You're going to feel that. You're going you're gonna to feel that touch on you. You're going to feel that love overshadow you. And then after we've repented, we're going to ask you to lift up your hands and lift up your head. Some of you have been living in shame because of things that you've done. I want you to know you don't have to feel that way. You can lift up your head. You can lift up your hands because he loves you so much. Because his grace is sufficient. Because his mercy is renewed every morning. That's the God that we serve. That's the love that's in our lives today. And because of that, you can lift up your head and your hands. And then I'm going to begin to speak a word of faith. And that word of faith is going to sound something like it's declaring in the Holy Ghost 
by the name and the power of Jesus' name that the Holy Ghost is poured out, that people are healed and that people are touched. And when you hear that word, it's going to build faith inside of you. And you're going to feel like, oh, this is my moment. You're going to realize that this is your moment of destiny. This is your day. This is your hour. And when you feel that feeling, I want you to just lift up your hands a little bit higher and open your mouth. And you may begin to speak in other tongues. You may begin to shout in victory. You may begin to declare your healing. You may declare whatever the Holy Ghost says out of your mouth. But in that moment, I want you to do it and release faith. And we're all going to do that as a family. Can somebody say amen? amen? Praise God. Somebody clap your hands and thank the Lord. If I asked you earlier, if you had not spoken in a heavenly language, you've never spoken in tongues before, and you raise your hand, I just ask that you would come up to this side of the platform. If I asked you earlier if you had pain in your body, you were living with issues of anxiety and all that, and you raised your hand, I asked that you would come to the center here. I asked a question earlier that if you were not sure what was going on, but you felt discomfort and issues in your life that you knew that God, only him, could fix, I want you to come over to this side of the platform. Pastor and ministry of the church, if you would, my wife, if you would, come and come in a line on the platform line on the platform with me if you would we're going to stretch forth our hands toward these people and then we're going to as the Holy Ghost leads we're going to walk with them and see God touch them praise God there's so many wonderful people over here that are looking to be filled with the Holy Ghost praise God there's so many people over here that are looking to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to make sure that we have a minister for each one of these people. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Woo! God's going to do something so awesome today. Can a saint of God say amen? Can a saint of God say amen? Praise God. Are there any believers in the house today? Any folks that believe that God's going to do something amazing? Wonderful, wonderful. I ask that, you know, if you don't feel comfortable coming to the front, please just stretch forth your hand towards these people and agree with us that God's going to do something. If you do feel comfortable, please feel comfortable to come down and just stretch your hands forth, lift your hands up. Praise God. When you get the Holy Ghost in a moment, all of you that are here searching for the Holy Ghost, just look at me for a moment. When the Holy Ghost touches you in a moment, it may sound like baby gibberish. It may not make sense. It's not going to be an English or a language that you've ever spoken before. But it's going to be a heavenly language. And He's a loving God. I just want you to lend yourself to that. Okay? Don't be distracted by the people around you. Don't be frustrated. Just lend yourself to His touch. Can you say amen to that? All right, we're going to repent first. Let's all pray together. God, in the name of Jesus, oh, I feel your love around me, Lord. I feel your touch in my life. I feel your touch in my mind. I, I feel your presence, God, that's all over this place. And I'm sorry for the things that I've done. I'm sorry for the thoughts that I've had. I've been living in a place that I haven't been comfortable. I don't want to stay there. I don't want to stay the same. I don't want to keep doing those things. I don't want to keep thinking those thoughts. I don't want to keep going those places. I want to change. I want to change. That's why I'm here. I need a change. I want to be closer to you. I want to do an about face in my life and come closer to the cross. I'm going to reject this world and I'm going to take a hold of you, Jesus going to take a hold of you, Jesus. Oh, that's it. That's it. Lift up your voice and just be honest with the Lord right now. Don't let me do the talking for you. You do the talking for yourself. You do the talking for yourself. Don't let that person praying with you do the talking for you. You do the talking for yourself. You talk to Jesus. You open up your heart to Jesus. You open up your mouth to Jesus. That's it. Lift it up. Lift it up. Come on. You can tell him. You can
can speak it out. You can do that. Don't be quiet about it. If you want to change, don't be quiet about it. If you want to do an about face, don't be quiet about it. Don't be timid. Don't hold back. You came here because you want to change. You came here because you want an about face. Don't be timid about it right now. Don't be scared with it. Be adamant about it. Put some volume to 